Stuffing balls, amazing to have with your Christmas turkey, roast beef, whatever it is you're having, even just a normal Sunday lunch. As it's Christmas, we wanna make them a little bit more special. We've got some juniper, we've got some chestnuts, some dried cranberries, and some sage. Bread crumbs, and in a pan here, I've got three onions that have been diced up and fried. Here, I've got 800 grams of normal sausage meat, okay? So the onions go into the sausage meat, start to mix it around, just loosen up the sausage meat because it'll be quite firm. And as it starts to loosen, we'll then add the rest of the ingredients. Now you can use different dried fruit if you want. Apricots, lovely. Dried apple will work really nicely. Raisins, sultanas, but cranberry at Christmas, it's perfect. It's a little bit like sweet and sour chewing gum. I love it. Drop them in and into that chestnuts okay now chestnuts you get these these are the vac packed ones okay so they come in a little vacuum sealed bag they're already cooked so they're nice and soft just break them up with your hands you want to make sure that they've still got a bit of texture to them relatively crunchy and chunky so that was about 100 grams of cranberries and then here i've got about a teaspoon maybe a bit more juniper berries okay one of those Christmas spices. I mean, you also associate juniper with gin. As it's Christmas day, you've probably had one of those already. You just gently chop it. Don't try and go too gung-ho, solely because they're round. And the moment you start hammering your knife into them, they'll ping off all over the table. Juniper goes in. An onion in stuffing wouldn't be happy unless it was with its mate, sage. And sage actually is incredibly powerful. You don't need too much of it to get that wonderful hit of fresh sage flavor. The moment you start chopping herbs, it releases all these natural oils and aromats. Into that, stuffing wouldn't be stuffing without bread. Now these are dried breadcrumbs, 75 grams here, but I'm probably gonna put three quarters of it in just to see kind of how texturally it feels. If I need to add the rest of it, I will. Now I love those instant Paxo stuffing. And this is just like a I suppose a super posh version of Paxo, except it's got meat in it. Then get your hands in, give it a good pinch of salt, good pinch of pepper, cracked black pepper I like. Again, big punchy flavour. I mean, when your teeth crunch down on a bit of cracked black pepper, mixed with that juniper, sage the onion, all of it, I mean, it's fantastic. If you work it a little bit with your hands, you'll feel the mix become tighter. And you can see that, look. It's already moving into a ball, into a mix. Grab a handful, roll it into a ball. I'm gonna do it a little bit bigger than a golf ball, I'd say. My estimate here will be 12. Gonna get 12 out of this. Now you can make these a day before you need them. Roll them up, put them onto a tray, cover it with a bit of cling film, stick them in the fridge. And for me, basically, I'm just gonna cook these straight away. Take your stuffing balls over to a frying pan. It's on a medium heat. Put in it a little drizzle, veg oil, and then stick your sausage stuffed in balls in the pan. You don't want to overcrowd the pan. Now the point of doing them in a frying pan means that freeze up your oven so you could cook everything else. If you wanted to, you could just put that whole tray in the oven and cook it. Just gently move them around, try and get some nice colour all over. And I know that's a little easier said than done because they're spheres and not cubes. They haven't got to be perfectly round. It's okay. All of this is about what it tastes like. So you see I'm cooking these nice and gently. The pan's not too packed. We're not burning stuff on the bottom of it. So these sausage stuffing balls have been cooking for around about 15 minutes. I'm just gonna gently lift them out, put them on a plate I'm gonna serve them on, and then a little bit more oil, and then stick in the remainder of your stuffing balls. Right then, the last lot of these sausage balls are cooked, ready to go, middle of the table, for everyone to grab a fork, stick it in there, whack it on their plate, with their roast turkey, roast potatoes, and everything else that's going on. Or to just eat on their own, because those are lush.